<coughs> this is Anya Devine here. Uh, we're at Kukenzie at a flower painting workshop. And this is um, the first day of the flowers, but the fourth day where they come in walking wounded, although Janet, you're nice and fresh. <laughs> yeah, so welcome. I'm going to do something on there. Hopefully it'll be uh, the painting. You'll be singing that my back. I'm not sure. Um, but you're very welcome. And you're very welcome. Thanks for showing up again. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's see now. <clears throat> I happen to be kind of, I know, I happen to be underneath the light there, so I just thought rather than have the shadow cast on it, push it back. Um, okay. All right. And I think I'll just work on this and I can talk about, um, okay. So there's two kinds of paper on the table over there. Yesterday I went to the range and I bought mount board and uh, gesso and I painted so it's primed with gesso. And the mount board is good because, again, it doesn't warp. And it's a surface that's unlike the canvas. It's a knockout, the woven texture, so the paint doesn't get stuck in the grooves. And there's something appealing. You'll see maybe when um, I do the demonstration why I like not having grooves and, and you know, not having a texture too much in the paper. Um, and then that's, this is um, the acrylic practice paper then, which is also very good for and smoothly, you know, from wiping off and things. So I, I maybe do a little bit of both. But the main reason, like I'd love that on the bigger size. But whenever I've done demonstrations before, I've always had this kind of sticking off the edge, you know. And um, maybe it'll still happen now, but I'm thinking if I give myself a big enough field uh, to work on, it might be. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's nice having the space, and you can always make it smaller, I suppose. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I think I'll just make a start. I'm sure things will come up as, we're, as I'm doing it. Um, okay. <coughs> Have I got what I need now? Yeah, these brushes. So I like to use um, the white flat brushes. And they're not, you know, with the watercolour, how you kind of precious about the brush now and keep it safe and everything. These are really cheap brushes and um, they're just to kind of get the paint down. <coughs> it's good having the white, the white brush, especially to start with, so that you can do the wild goose thing. You can make a wild goose tame, but you can't make a tame goose wild. <laughs> so the thing of starting out with something that feels expansive, expressive and open, and then you can, you can, um, you know, you can tamper, uh, make more considered marks into it later on. Okay, so let's see now. Let me see if I can push it back a little bit so that the, so it's kind of centrally underneath the... Oh, no, I think it's okay. <coughs> So the light is kind of catching the flowers a little bit more. Yeah, I think. It's a great video so far. Okay. And feel free to wander around as I'm working as well. Using the ultramarine blue and the hooker screen, it's the hooker screen, and that's the ultramarine blue there. Turn them upside down. Um, but the, it feels to me like, like for a beginning colour, it's, it's maybe when I half coat my eyes, that green doesn't feel as colourful. And then I go on to put some brown into it to knock the brightness of the colour out a little bit. So I'm going to put in some. There's big tubs of this as well now, but I just found that there, so I'll just use this one. And this is raw umber. But really, any dark brown will um, stop it being so colourful. And because there's a lot going on in the flower setup, isn't it? There's lots of flowers there. It's helpful to find something that, that you can kind of establish it fairly swiftly. I would say maybe something to describe the table, something for the leaves, and then in the flowers itself to have the, the green as a linking up thing. Bit like the bass and music, you know, having that um, way of holding it all together. Okay, so let's see. Hmm. Okay. And I'm visualizing this 
this, the flowers are going to off you and a piece of paper. There's a bit of dance before anything happens, Janice, just so you no, know. I'm, I'm having this one. That's great. To be fair, I've seen some of your YouTubes. Oh, okay, so you know, it takes me a of ways to get sorted. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to lift it up a bit there because it, it just felt like a more comfortable um, position. <clears throat> Okay, so with my eyes half closed now, I'm going to, I don't even see the red so much really, so I'm going to just fill in that space in between the four, so there's the yellow sunflower, I think it's a sunflower, and the one below it, and then the daisy and the, and the lily and the daisy up here. And within that, with my eyes half closed, everything reads shadow really. So I'm going to start by putting something dark in there. Yeah. This that space. And there's a bit of dark here too to the right of the daisy. <coughs> that's the back of the sunflower over there actually. And then there's a leaf that's going that way underneath the red flower that's also got a bit of that colour in it. <coughs> I wonder am I going to fit that daisy in. In the green shade down a little bit further. So I have put a bit more water on the brush now so that it remains viscous enough to, and it's a cross hatched move with the flat brush that will fill in the, the um, colour quickly for you. Yeah. And I'd imagine there'll be a little extension here for the sunflower over <laughs> the side <laughs> for Flexi. Honest to God. Maybe, we see. There's something, I think. The thing about flowers that I find is that they're shining so brightly from where they are that there's something that needs to break the boundary of the page. Some sort of weird thing like that. Like it needs to be, it won't be contained or something. But maybe it's just that I'm not, you know, the planning isn't, isn't very good. So that may, I don't know. We'll see. What am I doing now? Oh yeah, so. <clears throat> yeah, so maybe I'll see now if this is going to wipe away. You know how I was talking about it's a really nice thing for it to wipe away the um paint to just wipe, wipe away the paint on this surface to be able to describe the shape of the sunflower, for example, back here. So if it's not dried already now, it should wipe off a little bit. So I can start to explain the shape <coughs> that's made where the background meets this, the leaf of the sunflower. And um, maybe you can put on a bit more paint. Or, and the other nice thing to do is to give it a bit of a splash and then as it's drying, we have quite a nice texture. I am going to see if I can manage to shift it and move that way a bit so that I can fit in this one first. So I'll just put the leaf a little bit closer. I think the blaze might be here instead. The shelf might be there. That's fine. Do you see the thing that happens with the drips, you know, mm -hmm. when they, as they dry, when you wipe them away, it's exciting. And it depends on how quickly you wipe them away, how bright they are. You know. <clears throat> okay. So, and I think there's something in if you can if you can kind of find that bit of gusto at the start and the whole thing of being confident and the chest open and working from the shoulder, it imbues the thing with the energy that's contained in it all the way through then. And you can work in back into it and it still have that move that that um, began. <coughs> and end it out with the board. <coughs> so I'll expect everyone wants to be doing your own except for me. We're dancing, we're ballet dancers. Okay. So, just give me, I mean, you kind of have to scrub a bit with the wet paper. If I was to do it on this surface, it might be a little bit easier to lift it off. This is the other paper that's available over there. It's the practice paper. And I'll just show you what, what I was doing on there. And of course, it's a bit wetter there as well. Now I let it dry a little bit so that it's similar to the uh, big one. Okay. I'll just let it dry a bit. What did I do on here? Yeah, I should keep, I should keep going. Is it saying if it is, um, if it is going to dry, I could keep lifting off things. <coughs> um, yeah, I was a bit comfortable lifting it off because really, 
With acrylic, of course, you can lay it on over the dark anyway, so the lily, if I wanted the lily to read as being white later on, I could, I could either put a bit of collage on there, or there's other ways of doing it. So if I am lifting off at the beginning of the painting, I think I prefer to lift off around, you know, the shape of things outside, rather than in the area of green, you know, to kind of get a feeling for the curve of the leaf as it extends from the sunflower there. And there's something quite pleasing about the mark that's made when you lift off. Mm -hmm. it can be nice. And you want to try it? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't very clear there. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's the, that, that started off anyway. Where's that for? I think that's fabulous. Oh yeah, that's it. Done now. Okay, do I go walk home and sit down on the grass now for the day? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. So I think the next thing I'm going to do now is using my masking tape. Using <clears throat> masking tape, I'm gonna. a line to describe the, where the tabletop stops. I'm just trying to find the, the distance away. And uh, I think it's a, a close enough to horizontal, I would say, is it? Yeah. The where you well, not really, he'd be saying, could you just make sure that it's straight, like that it's vertical and horizontal? Because he's having to try to match the frame up to make the thing. But I think, even though it's a circular table, I quite like the clarity of the. I, I like the clarity of it just being a space of um, a, a line and red below it. And so I maybe get another rather than work on the same one now. And that's why I've got a lot of these as well. If you want to just use those for the next color, there's lots of them. Um, because you don't want to be taking too much time wiping away. And I, I use that again. Like, okay, so we've got crimson and. I think it's a combination of crimson and cadmium red, maybe. That might be that tabletop. So, you know, before before the, the coffee break, like before, like we say in the first half an hour, I would I would encourage you to find something inspiring to describe the tabletop, the vase, and the general, something general in the flowers. So to have an inspiring surface there, whether it reads as well it is, it's fine. But just something that you feel excited to work over. Um, so it's kind of I'm saying that because I think it's 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 like it's it feels good to work quickly um, early on, I think. Yeah. But you've got your own pace as well of course. Okay, so what am I gonna do now then? I think I'll put some ultramarine blue into that as well because there is a shadow cast, mm -hmm. isn't there? By the um, yeah. There's a shadow cast by the flowers onto the tabletop. That's okay. <clears throat> and we've got the roller. Well, the roller is covered in paint and it's um so it's not spreading it on flat. Somebody had a bit of um card over here. Got to, oh, one of these. Oh, was that you? Oh, no, I've got it. <clears throat> if I can find that. Something like even the heavy Yeah, Oh, you've got those squeegee things. If that's any <clears> use to you. I've never used them before. But if you, you know, in the, in, in the absence of those, you could use a bit of card. Let's see if we can do it with just a bit of the. Um, watercolor paper. That's a bit annoying. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and it's, you know, I could just keep going. Of course, it'd be handy too to have a second thing of water. I steal some someone's water there. Oh. Let's take yours, Tom. Yours. That's fine. It's fine. Is that yours? It's fine. My God, they're all nicely set up there. 
And you could start with some of these too if you want to do big shapes. Okay. Yeah, I've got a nice big brush there as well. It's handy for being able to adjust them on that thing. Okay, so what about this one? Just a moment. experiment with the wiping off thing and see what the drips might do um, when they're a little bit drier to wipe them away. If I was to wipe them away now, it would all blend in together because the paint is, is still too wet in between the rivulets of water. Oh, well, this is oh, yeah. So there's some painted paper there as well. Oh, okay. um, so what next then? a long time since I've done this. It feels like I'm, I'm trying to figure out about what, what would I do next, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but it, I'm just trusting that if I continue looking at it, something will come up. Yeah, I think the next thing I would suggest to you there now would be to find the, the position of the individual flowers. Um, and maybe cadmium yellow might be a good colour to use. And that's... Um, Orange. And uh, I might even use it. We could use it straight from the tube, or we could um, pick up any other brushes. Anyways, so I'm, I'm trying to find a, a clean, dry brush in order to use the yellow, because yellow is a colour that you don't want to be using. A, just now but of course when you're doing it you can wash it and just be sure that you've got a clean brush oh, you yeah another so I just took it straight from the thing there <clears throat> so with my eyes half closed I'm noticing that the sunflower might be about there -ish. and maybe the other one may be about there so a bit like positioning the nose yesterday we weren't here, but we were positioning the nose without drawing the nose. It's the same here. You're kind of just positioning the colours of the flowers, knowing that you can subdue them a little brighter um, later on. And maybe I might as well stick in the centre of the sun of the daisy that's there as well. There's a, a little bit of yellow to represent the daisy too, maybe. <coughs> okay. Yeah, and I went that background, like what's happening here now is that I'm really noticing the bright of the daisy above the kind of Payne's grey colour background that's represented by the mm -hmm. ceiling. So I think if I were to find Payne's grey, there's, there's a bigger version of that as well. This isn't, it's just grey, but it's fine. Um, Yeah. Well, your your guest, if you're as 
Here, by the way, just on the floor. Yeah, look, I'm hard at work. See, <laughs> it's just it's nice to see you in the nursery. <laughs> this is the feeling I'm getting here is that um, joyful child lady, right here. Hey. And I said to somebody yesterday, in the artist way, she mm. says, Serious art is born. Serious play. We were saying that, isn't it? Serious art is born from serious play. So yeah. really honouring the playful instinct that lives in all of us, and that will set fire to whatever else you're doing. If you mean that, you'll imbue all the stuff you're doing with a sense of adventure. And if it's not adventurous and exciting, why bother doing it? You know, like the cats have said that, didn't they? If if you already know what it's going to look like, why bother doing it? <laughs> you know? So just to have that, let's enter into it like an unknown, but inspired by the joy of these colourful and um, beautiful things to be observing for the day. There's something very, there's something very appealing in that. Um, okay, I'm just going to put a little bit more on them, because I'm conscious that I want it to stay maybe wet enough that, I'd say, it's, it's not wet enough, I'd say, but I'm conscious that I want it to stay a little bit wet so that I could... Maybe paint the daisy into it with the paper towel. Let's see. <coughs> you know the daisy that's up there. Like, yeah. I'd say it's probably a bit too dry, but should we see? It might be. And I've got um. I could do with it. I could do with more water actually. I'm going to fill the buckets of water. I just take everybody's water. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you could, um, what was I going to say? I forget. Tell me about the daisy. Yeah. Um, I kind of thought I might use the. Oh, yeah, it's still got a bit of red in it. I thought I might use the. Um, fluidity at the end so that it's not suddenly stopping um, you know the grey is, is um, coming down into the dark ground elsewhere too. I don't really want it to be too reddish though. So. So what will happen now if I try and lift off that, that daisy? I might try with a brush even. So it's kind of here. And yeah, no, I'm going to use the kitchen paper. Um, I'm noticing its position, like it is directly above the and, and a little bit to the left of the um, front of the jug. And there's another point in there. I think I'll use the rag because the kitchen paper isn't holding up the There's 
this on the paper, it's not lifting the surface of the paper. This is why I really love working on smooth surfaces. You can lift it off and retrieve the light. And there's other ways of making the light happen as well, which I'll show you in a few minutes. I'm doing the other daisy because although it's not in the light, it is the same flower and I wanted to have some bit of cohesion in the, the way I'm making it. Um, have some similarity to the daisies elsewhere. Okay, and then there's a nice red. Um, so we've got the daisy, daisy, bright red thing standing out there, and the red thing standing out here. Sharp red, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me just use the fingers there and it's across the way from that but down a little bit. I'm just going in that direction. Just going in, in that direction a little bit more. show you a little bit more about what might happen in a, a five, like five minutes before the end. How, how much time is that? I don't know, three minutes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, I like at the start to just encourage you to find the location of things and not worry about explaining them too much. And I suppose I was wanting to explain that just to kind of say, keep the faith, you can make it real as a flower, don't worry. Even if it looks like a big blob early on, there are ways of manipulating the paint later that will make it read as a flower. So um, I can do that later on, maybe though, rather than go into that just now. I'm going to keep with the kind of energetic placing of things. And it's not as though, like I'm not working um, totally blindly here. I feel like it's important, at least for me, I feel it's important to place things truly, you know, to not be lazy in the looking, like do my best to find the position of this flower in relation to the sunflower across, the position of the lily there, the other, the other red flower that sits below it or above the jug and to the right of the, the daisy here. So something like there. So although it's a little blob really, you know, made with fingers, I'm hoping that it's fairly true to the position that I'm seeing it in the still life setup. And that somehow feels important. I think there needs to be some kind of an anchor that you're you're not just letting yourself away with all of it like or something. You know, and within that you can you can feel a little bit more um like having some bit of a structure. It's like we spoke about this a few days ago too. Having some bit of structure I think allows you to be more free in the mark making once you have the you're positioning them. Okay. Alright, so <clears throat> And every, every time you look back at your painting, you might decide, what's the next most important thing? What's the next evident thing to, to make it read, say, for example, as a sunflower? How can I make that, that read more as a sunflower um, quickly? Like, what is the quickest way I can make it feel like a sunflower? And I think to put, a dark, to put dark into the middle will give it a feeling of a sunflower. You know, it'll just give a, 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 the other step towards representing it faithfully, kind of. <clears throat> Maybe there's a touch in that one there as well. Okay, and we've just found a, a few other little bits of red. Although they're in shadow, they're evident in there, aren't they? The red flowers. So there's that one. And there's that one to the left. And then we've got the face, the jug. Kitchen paper, I mean the PVA glue, and you'll find containers. There's loads of containers for stuff. So just fill yourself some glue if you're interested in using collage. Give it a go. See. Uh, and just to say, you know, we'd be in the company of Matisse. Like. <laughs> I was saying that to you yesterday. Um, as well. Okay. So yeah, I know that's time up now, but I did want to get the job done. <clears throat> Something there.
enough then like you could um, use the chalks or I'm, I'm gonna t just do another two minutes maybe Terry if that's okay yeah that's good try and get it a little bit redo as the shape but then you can always do things like um you've driven that from the glue in your fingers you could always do things like use a red chalk or red oil pastel later on to define the edge of the jug or you could use more red paint over the top um, you know to get the, the shape of it as it meets the tabletop there I could I could draw sometimes even drawing with your non-dominant hand <coughs> means that you're not being precious about it and uh, it serves the purpose of creating you know, just to bring bring something new in a different quality of mark <coughs> and having said that oh yeah, we've got the oil pastel as well which can do which can do things like explain you know over the top of the of the acrylic it can be a clear petal shape for you <coughs> and, and again using your why does it keep doing that it's like jumping down every time I feel like every time I look away, it's sneaking down. <coughs> um, <coughs> so with the non-dominant hand, you could draw little bits of the flowers too, maybe with the chalks. I think the non-dominant hand means that you're still, it's all to play for. It's a bit organic. And there's a, a kind of, not, it's not such a tendency to fix. It's more free. So, um, and all the way through your painting, you'll be able to, to keep that feeling of, um, you'll be able to adjust the edges all the way through. You'll be able to find different things to make marks. <coughs> just, I know it keeps in just one more thing, but this, um, I wanted to show you the stencils because there's a lovely selection of them there. And if, you, if, if at any point, <laughs> if at any point you just don't know what to do next, um, it might be a nice thing to, it might be a nice thing to just bring in um, a stenciled mark. Like if you want to be surprised by your work again, you could do something different with, um, a, a, you know, with a color or pattern somewhere, and it'll, it might cause you to. That really didn't work, did it? <laughs> could print it that way and then see what would happen. Yeah, you know, you can do things with. Um, don't need one to do it there. But there's, a, there's other ones as well. There's quite a good selection of them. That wasn't a very good explanation of what they can do. It's really they're great fun. Um, maybe in the greenery as well. Like, I have got red on the brush now, but it's okay because I did want it to be kind of dark green there. Um, so say for example here, I don't know. Or even to create, create a bit of an extension. And none of it is set in stone anyway, like you're able to continue adjusting um, all the time with the acrylic. If you try it quickly, you can work over it or you could stick stuff on. <coughs> okay, I'm really kind of losing the top here. Okay, it just seemed quite dark there, but I want to get rid of that now because it's all a bit muddy on that side. <coughs> trying and failing, you'll discover something as well. There's a Samuel Beckett quote, isn't there, about um, fail, fail better, or something. Try hard, try again, fail better. <laughs> fail, I don't know, something about failing, no matter. Mm -hmm. Fail, fail better. Say that again? Fail, and then fail better. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine to fail. Okay. So there's, there's some, some nice um, stencils there. 
Okay. Where are we? Like, I don't know if we need here. I suppose just to kind of um, recognize what's available here. That's okay. Recognize what's available. You could always, even for the tabletop, there's loads of different collage papers in here, and if it did appeal to you using collage, you could end up. parts of the tabletop or something. Maybe tomorrow we can bring the fuchsia in from across the road. There's some, you know, they said I can use some flowers in the gardens here as well. And um, so that's another way of making a mark, you know, to describe the petal as as brightly as it is. Because there's something about really explaining the uh, sumptuousness of the flowers. And I think that's the thing that makes me want to reach for different media. Um, I'm just going to stop, I think. It's a little bit chaotic here now. <laughs> I'll put, the, I'll put the, all the materials on that table and the, everything like the collage will be down there and all the, all the paint. And there's also, I could have forgot, I mean, we'll do another demonstration later so that you, you've got time to get on, but we've also got, um, you know, ink where you can draw with the um, stick dipped into ink. And there's different colors of, of the ink as well. So I suppose I'm wanting you to feel that you can be quite free because there's ways of reining it in and then being free again. So there's the rollers and the big brushes and then there's lines you can make and collage can cover things, turning it upside down. Has anyone got any questions or anything? Okay, I'm sweating. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll put all the Put all the stuff on the table and you can get yourself set up and just um, start away. I had a look from every angle and I feel like it's the flowers look good for, from every angle in, in my view. If you want to make the jug read as a jug from your point of view, you could always just stick a handle on. But it, it'll be okay, that shape reads as a vase too, I think, mm -hmm. from uh, each viewpoint, so you can give or take the handle. Okay. All right, so there's no questions about anything. And um, really, you're free to use anything you can find here. And, <clears throat> and do, I know I look really disorderly here, but do in advance set yourself up so you can reach for whatever it is you need. You might look at the still life set up and choose a few, few pieces of collage to bring to your table, a few colors of paint, you know, so, so that it's not like you've got every single thing around your space, which can feel a little bit overwhelming. Okay, but I think you, I think you'll enjoy it once, once I let you actually do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So thanks very much for your attention and thanks for doing the timing. And yeah, all the very best to everyone there. Will I, will I sweep around to show? I would do other not be on the video. And maybe I'll turn out. Actually, I won't. But yeah, stay where you are. So that's just the picture there, and everyone here will remain incognito. <laughs> Bye.